Then I take you to what's called the jewel of the archdiocese. And this time it's a very strange jewel. As I said in my past explanations, that the jewels of our archdiocese are different types. They are small, they are big, they are obvious, they are hidden. They are related to the religious, they are related to certain persons. And in that way, perhaps, there is a big liking for the jewel, for wherever it comes from, provided it shines to us as a special jewel in the Archdiocese. So this time I am taking what we call the Immaculate Heart of Mary Church at Kalina Agrara. You might be surprised, some may not even know this place. You know, we call this a jewel because it was born with the Jesuits. The Jesuits who are run the St. Joseph's University, College and School, etc. And so the Jesuits are the ones perhaps who found this place, which is a barren place. And there was nobody there at the time when they bought 46 acres of land in that particular place. And they wanted to start their own Jesuit houses, especially the novitiate. And so the history goes back to 1955. And Archbishop Otokumari entrusted not only this place but something beyond it also to the Jesuits and say that you are missionaries and help us to develop our missions and sort of cultivate our missions as such. And so the Jesuits, as they are known for their hard work and especially pioneering missionaries, they took up this particular part for we are missionary endeavors and we remember Chikkam Nahalli, which is 4 kilometers from Akalena Agrara and the St. Francis Xavier Church, which was run by the Jesuits for a long time. Earlier also I have said that our Bego Church, our Bego Parish of St. Ignatius, it still bears the name of St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, which was looked after by the Jesuits for many, many years before they had it over to the Archdiocese. And so this particular place, which was barren, which was open, and we are told in that particular village at that time there were only 300 people, out of which about 60 were Catholics, Christians. You can imagine today it's unbelievable that it has become such a big part of our history, almost the door to the electronic city as such. And so the first priest that uh, sort of started a small chapel there, in fact, the Jesuit builders, they are called Father Elicio Cantoni and Brother Angelo Vignami. These two Jesuits started the buildings there and the first thing they said perhaps a small chapel would be in place and that's how the chapel was built in 1956. And the architects, these are the architects and of the Mount Joseph, St. Joseph are the ones who sort of reached out to the people in a small way in the beginning and for the, for the novitiate when it was built the novices from what we call the place of Calicut were shifted to Bangalore and that's how the Jesuits started the novitiate in Bangalore. Now, well, after many priests that are a member of this imagined heart of Mary Church is the provincial at that time of happy memories for the Ronnie Brothers. He died a few years ago, six, seven years ago, and he was a notable Jesuit known in Bangalore, very much also in what we call the interreligious circles and ecumenical circles. He is one who brought the many things together. And today, perhaps, if we have what's called the Almost United Christian Forum, it's the Rani Prabhu of those heydays when he was the provincial, he's supposed to have taken care of this parish and especially the organized the youth, the, 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 the novices of the Jesuit congregation helped a little and bringing the people with street plays, with small shows, small exhibitions, the Bible stories, Bible enactments, and to there was a scholastic by name, Mohan Joseph, who was very much at every Sunday, 
He enacted the gospel, he made the people, I know the people were so much engrossed in it that they were part of the parable as such. So this was the things that was done in order to attract the people. And slowly the Jesuits started a school there because the government school was not of a little high standard and so a private school was allowed to be started by the government what they called the Loyola Primary School. When Father Anand Prabhu became the rector, he also took a lot of interest and for the tenants, Farais, who saw that the entire property was taken care of and Archbishop Ignatius Pinto on 2nd of December 1998 blessed the present church and on that day people still remember that there was also the first communion ceremony that day and many children received the first communion on the day of the inauguration of the church. Father Maxim Raksina who came in 1999 as a second term he has come he had come there and he started the social center and also the hostel for the children. Father John de who came in 2011 constructed the room, you know it was still a village type of room, a small part we like and so all these improvements were made by the Jesuits again and again and each one perhaps complementing or supplementing what was done by the predecessors. The present I am told that there is one of the model parishes and they have not only the beautiful liturgical services but also the people are sort of brought together in groups. They have formed six different wards. The small Christian community is working beautifully with the religious, with the sisters, going and mixing with the people and bringing the people to the church. The present parish priest is Father Paul Raj, a very nice, a very good pastor who I have known very much when I was in Darwa. He was in charge of the the students who were the first vocations or the candidates for the Jesuits and Father Balraj is a nice man, a soft spoken but very much connected to the people and very much for the poor and the families as such. I wish Father Balraj and all the Jesuit fathers and especially the families, I would say I am happy to declare your parish as a eminent and a shining jewel of the archdiocese.